G'day and welcome to Flightport headquarters in beautiful Byron Bay, Australia. We're really excited to introduce you to your new flight board. We designed a board that we would want for ourselves. One that offers outstanding design, engineering, craftsmanship and materials. Every detail has been refined for high performance, ease of use and durability. And we've really spared no expense to create a product and a new experience that we know you will love. Okay, let's get your board assembled and get you up and running. Charging. We'll start by charging flight controller. Plug the charging cable into an outlet. Turn on the controller by holding the plus and mode buttons together for three seconds. The flight logo will appear. If the charger is flat, it will turn on automatically once connected to the charger. Open the rubber cover on the underside and attach the magnetic charging plug. Make sure the charging pins are properly connected. The word charging will appear on the screen when properly connected with the charge percentage shown. Always check to ensure the controller is at least 50% charged before each use. To charge flight cell, first remove it from its protective case. Place the battery in a cool dry location away from flammable or hot items or direct sunlight. Connect the charger plugs to the battery terminals. Clip the magnetic charging clip to the battery as shown to wake the battery up for charging. Check that connections have been made correctly. A red light indicates a low charge. A green flashing light will indicate the battery is charging and will progress to full as the battery charges. It takes about two hours for the battery to fully charge and the unit will turn off automatically when charging is complete. Preparing the board. Okay, let's get the board ready. Remove the board from its bag and place it upside down on top of the bag. It's important to keep the black carbon out of direct sunlight for long periods of time. Before you connect the e-foil to the board, check that the orange o-ring is clean of any sand, debris or kinks and is correctly in position. Adding the e-foil. Next, open the e-foil bag. The Flightboard e-foil includes the propulsion system integrated into the hydrofoil fuselage. At the other end of the mast is our patented flight box, which makes assembly super simple. Inside the flight box is a powerful onboard computer. Carefully fit the flight box into the mast box on the bottom of the board. As you do this, direct the power cables towards the battery compartment. Ensure that no cables are compressed and that the O-ring has not moved. Check that flight box is evenly seated and flush in the mask box. Add a little bit of TEF gel to the bolt. Use the four 20mm stainless steel bolts to secure the e-foil. Tighten them up with the hex key provided in a cross pattern. Apply enough force that the bolts are tight, but not so much that the hex key tool is bending. When properly tightened, the o-ring will be compressed and watertight. If the o-ring is missing or damaged, or if the bolts are not tight, then the board will leak water into the battery compartment. Add the fuselage tail and wings. Take the fuselage tail section from the case and insert it into the fin under the propeller guard. Use the 16 mm bolt and add a thin layer of TEF gel to prevent corrosion. You'll need to push and hold the tail in to compress the small o-ring which will then allow you to tighten the bolt using the hex key. There are six wing shims to choose from. Changing shims alters the amount of stabilizing downforce provided by the tail and also impacts the balance point and responsiveness of the foil. Beginners should start with a number one or two shim and adjust based upon preference. Lower shim numbers allow faster speeds without too much front foot pressure. Higher shim numbers create more responsiveness but lead to more lift at high speeds. Take your preferred plastic wing shim and place it in position on the fuselage using the 16 mm bolts. Add a little bit of TEF gel to the bolts before attaching the stabiliser wing. Make sure the stabiliser wing tips are facing toward the board. There's a sacrificial anode inside the fuselage, above the front wing. The anode minimises the galvanic corrosion reaction that can occur when you use your flight board in salt water. Even so, it is very important to regularly check your bolts and reapply TEF gel to prevent damage or seizing. Remove your chosen wing from the wing bag or travel case. This time, check that the wing tips are facing away from the board. Check that you've got the correct length bolts for the wing by inserting them into the wing. 
add a little bit of Teff gel to the bolt. Make sure you tighten the bolt securely to make sure there's no movement between the wing and the fuselage. Connecting flight cell. Now to connect flight cell, which is our battery. Before turning the board over, it's a good idea to add the wing covers. This protects the wings from getting damaged and also protects you from the sharp trailing edges. Carefully turn over, trying to minimize weight placed directly on the wing tips when you place the board down. Open the battery compartment by twisting the two latches to open the board lid. Inspect the black rubber seals for damage. Make sure the seal and the sealing surface on the lid are clean of any sand for a great seal. Clean if necessary. Carefully lower the base of the flight cell into the board with the warning label facing up. Connect it to the flight box. Ensure careful alignment, taking care not to damage the small data pins. Connect the orange power cable to the orange battery socket and the black power cable to the black battery socket. You will feel a click with each successful connection. Pairing and arming. Pairing the flight controller to the board is easy. Hold the plus button on the flight controller for seven seconds to put it into pairing mode. The words press mode to commence pairing appear. Then press mode button to confirm. The words looking for new pair will appear. Next, place the magnetic clip in this position on the flight cell. Place and hold the base of the flight controller on the arming pad on the board receiver. Watch the LED lights go into chasing mode, scrolling over and over. Once paired successfully, the LEDs will change to a light blue color. Be careful not to hold in this position for too long. A longer hold over 20 seconds will tell the system to go into software update mode. If this happens, you'll need to reset the board by disconnecting and reconnecting the flight cell power leads. Once pairing is complete, you can remove the magnetic clip and close the lid, locking it down with the latches. Make sure to check that it's sealed tightly. We are now ready to test the motor. A paired controller must be armed to start the motor. Be careful when riding not to accidentally hold the plus button for seven seconds, as this will put the system in pairing mode and cause the connection to be lost. This safety lock feature ensures that riders cannot accidentally spin the propeller by accidentally bumping the throttle trigger. To arm the motor, pull the throttle trigger 100% and then release it completely on the flight controller. Press and release the minus button. Pull the throttle trigger within the five second countdown window to activate the propeller. Always verify the propeller is clear and in a safe location before activating the motor. Never run the motor out of water for more than three seconds, as doing so can overheat and damage the propeller shaft and seals. Okay, your board is ready to ride and take flight, but first, Please ensure you're familiar with local laws, licensing, waterways, and water depths and currents, which can be affected by tide times. It is your responsibility to abide by your local laws, speed, and safety requirements. In all cases, do not operate flightboard within 150 meters of people. Do not flightboard further from shore than you can return by swimming. Constantly monitor the battery of the flight controller and the flight cell at all times. The battery times are variable depending on many factors, including wind, current, weight, speed, and power consumption. We recommend the use of a helmet and a PFD, and also letting a friend know your plans before you go. We also recommend you take a lesson with an approved flight school, or refer to our How to Flightboard video for tips and tricks on getting started and up and foiling.